John and I are in Death Valley this week where there really isn't any cell service. I hadn't planned on putting a video up, but there is a, a paid service I can get down at Furnace Creek. So I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna answer just a few questions and also maybe share some tips uh, for those of you who find technology a little bit challenging. The first one, I feel a little weird telling you because for some of you, this is gonna seem like you're kidding. You're sharing this, but for people of our generation, I'd say people kind of over 60 who didn't grow up with computers and that sort of thing, then it's not as apparent. And so I quite often get the question about where is the description box? Because people always mention description box. Where is it? Well, you have to know, first of all, it's different on a computer, a laptop. It's different there than it is on a, a mobile device. And we're at, we live in the Apple ecosystem, so I'm talking about that. And I'm hoping that Android is similar. On a computer, if you look below the video, you'll see something that says show more. And you click on that and that will open up everything. And in there, I put uh, links. If I have mentioned a link, I'll put a link to my Amazon store. So you can look at that if, if you want to see other things that we use. No pressure at all to buy anything. Uh, we already buy too much stuff. Uh, but I also put uh, the music that I've used in my videos. So if you want to know what the name of a song is or something like that, that's also in the description box. And then on a mobile device... It is uh, really hard because it, it's a, there is a symbol called, a, called an inverted circumflex, or it's also called a Karen, spelled C-A-R-O-N, and it looks like a, a kind of an upside down, uh, kind of an upside down, I know in French there's, uh, there's an accent called an arete, and it looks like one of those, but it's upside down. And that's in the bottom right hand side of the screen of your mobile device, whether it's an iPad or an iPhone. Um, if you click on that, if you touch that, that will open up the description box. That's where you find additional information, no matter whose YouTube video you're on. The next question came from Liz Calkins, and she wants to know what we do before we leave the house for a while. So when we're going out of town for any period of time, you know, a month, two months, three months, what do we do to the house to repair? And I know that's something that everyone, most people do worry about it, and we, we've given it a lot of thought. Well, first of all, we don't worry a whole lot because we don't have valuables, per se. Uh, we don't have, I don't have jewelry. Uh, we don't have money. We don't keep things like that. And if you do, then I would recommend you Put it in a safe deposit box, but not to keep things in your house unless you have great, you know, hiding places. So what we do is we have um, uh, cameras everywhere <laughs> and uh, um, those are hooked up, you know, through your phone. We have tried multiple kinds. I think right now we're on the Arlo cameras and John seems to like those. We have both the plug-in kind. We have uh, some that are, um, you know, battery operated. Probably, probably more important than cameras we have amazing neighbors. We know all of our neighbors and we look out for each other. And if our neighbors see anything suspicious, they get in touch with us. Now we're out here in Panamint Valley where there is no cellular service, no way to hook on anywhere unless you had a satellite dish. We also have uh, um, those lights that are controlled uh, via Bluetooth. The ones that I have really liked, cause I've also tried multiple kinds, the one I've gotten, I got about a year ago, um, they're called Wiz, W-I-Z. And I really like the lights. You can get two kinds, one that does color and you can change the colors and one that does, um, one that is just a, you know, white light or, or warm white or whatever. So I highly recommend those. I got them at Home Depot. I think the ones that are just the white lights are like nine or $10 and the colored ones are probably 14, 15. And we put those in various lamps in the house. They can be controlled um, on, on a schedule. You can actually, there's actually an, a vacation mode. So you can, they'll go on randomly. And um, you can also control them via Bluetooth. So you could be out of town and you could turn a light on. And also keeping lights on outside the house because you want your outside cameras to also pick up on whatever's going on outside. The other part of her question had to do with uh, things like your irrigation outdoors. 
Well, about a year ago or so, I installed a new controller for our irrigation system. It's a company called Raccio, R-A-C-H-I-O, and you should check your your water company because a lot of places will have rebates for anything that reduces the amount of water you use. And the reason this one does that is because it is hooked to weather stations in your area. And so if it rains, it will actually turn the water off. Uh, you know, it will not go on that day. You can set it to go off as much as you want. You can also bypass that water, you know, the, the weather station aspect of it. And you can control it remotely. So if you know that that you had a really hot day that day when you were out of town, you can run your system. You can one, run one single station or you can run the whole thing to make sure that, you know, your plants are, are taken care of. So that is a really good um, a good option. And I would definitely look into that because it was so easy to install. All I did was disconnect the wire from one controller and stick it into the other one. It was so, it didn't take more than five or 10 minutes. But I would also say that you probably should have somebody come by once a week or once every couple of weeks just to make sure that you don't have any broken lines because irrigation is always a problem. And uh, they can check to see if you have any irrigation issues, make sure you know you don't have any paper on the, your doorstep, all that sort of thing. Those are kinds of things my neighbors do for us, which I really appreciate. But um, that's uh, so those are some of the ideas I have for you. And uh, try not to worry when you're out of town. Next. The next tip is because somebody asked me for a link to a pot they had seen in one of my videos. And I never had the name of the pot. I had gotten it at TJ Maxx, and so I wasn't of much help. But I eventually did figure out what this pot was called. Uh, and the, and uh, this, this, this is similar to the one that she had seen. I actually just purchased this because I wanted a lid for it. I love this pot. It works on induction, works on gas, works on everything. And it had a lid and it had these little strainer holes. Uh, and it has a little pour spout. So it was everything I wanted, perfect size for two. But the way I found out what it was is something I do all the time. I go to Google. I type in something I think is similar. It is a pot. So I think I probably put in small pot. And then I hit images. So you go to the that little menu there and you touch on images. Some of you probably already know this and do this. And then I just started scrolling down until I saw something that was similar. And sure enough, this thing is called a milk pot. And then I was able to go on Amazon and I found this little, this little pot um, with a lid. And so I purchased it. And so far, so good. I, I really like having the ability to put a lid on it. The next one also has to do with finding things that you want for your van or your car or whatever. There is a website called carid.com and it is amazing. So if you go to car ID, you type in the make and model of your vehicle and then what it is you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for, uh, you know, those bumpers, you know, for hitting animals on the road. So you don't, you protect your car, unfortunately not the animal. Um, or if you're looking for like a dashboard cover and you can then, you know, search down and you'll, you'll find all kinds of amazing products from different manufacturers. So if you're looking for something for your van, go to carid.com. The next tip is also uh, security related. Your phone, and I'm using my phone right now to film so I can't show you, but I will show you a screen capture of it. You have that lock screen on your phone. And if somebody, if you lost your phone and somebody couldn't, you know, wouldn't know who to contact. And so the way I do it is I use an um, app. It's a free app that you can download to your phone. It's called Snapseed, S-N-A-P-S-E-E-D. And uh, Snapseed will allow you to put text on your, your image, the, whatever you select. And then you go to your uh you go to the settings and then you pick wallpaper and you can select that image for your wallpaper. And so you have a phone number for someone to contact if you lose your phone and they can then reach you. The only caveat is make sure you use somebody else's phone number, not the phone number of the cell phone. So I have John's cell phone number on my lock screen. And so, you know, hopefully you have somebody who you can, you know, do that so that you're able to get your phone back.
those are my, uh, I guess you could call them my tech tips for old goats like us. And uh, maybe you've learned something. And if you have any favorite tech tips, please pass those on. I think because we're old goats, we don't always think of things in the midst of something. So this drive up here to where we're camped right now, it's 16 miles. There's some really rough washboard sections. And last night in the middle of the night, John, I guess, woke up and thought, why didn't we air down? So we are going to air down the vehicle before we head back the 16 miles on that, that rough patch. And hopefully it'll be a lot better. <laughs> Tom thought this would be a good shirt for Owen.